this is Amber with from Farm to Yarn and just wanted to show you a little bit about spinning thin with wool and show you some of the kind of tips and tricks that I think might be helpful for a beginner. So what we're trying to achieve is something that's like this and hopefully you can see it. Um, this is, I mean, really almost, almost small enough to maybe even go through uh, a needle, for sure embroidery needle. Um, so we're trying to get really spin and how do we do that especially if uh, maybe you haven't done a lot of real thin stuff or you're newer to spinning so how do we do that well first off start with roving of course um, you don't want to be working with something that's not nicely processed because it's just going to make the job harder and when um, I work with roving so this is just some Cordell wool and it's already fairly thin. I could start spinning from this and then I'm just going to have to work harder to constantly be, you know, drafting this and, and pulling it apart. But you end up with kind of a lot of pieces and it's a little bit harder to manage. So what I find is the first thing I do if I want to spin really thinly is to break apart my roving into strips. And I'll do this however many times I think it needs. And on this particular one, I cut that roving, which was a couple inches wide, into eight individual strips. And once you have all those strips, you just have a little pile that you can work from. And by only having this much wool, it's going to be a lot easier when you go to draft and you're kind of pulling that apart and you're trying to get to just a really thin, fine yarn. So I'm going to zoom in now and get a little bit closer and show you the hands-on stuff and the fine details on my hands on how to do thin wool. So I tend to find that I'll adjust my tension as I go along, how I need to, and I'm just kind of on the medium. Um, if you're newer to this, you might want to start on your widest band so you can go a little bit slower. And I've already been working on this one, so I can't start, but I would just start by having the tiniest bit of wool on my leader and just get it going. As I'm spinning, I'm pulling back the wool with my right hand, and I'm very gently releasing the twist from my left hand. And if I fully release it, I'll lose my I lose any of the twist and to join the two together I'm just going to bring a little bit of piece a little small piece from one of my new strips of the roving and I have the current the end of the current one that I'm working and I'll just spin and feel that twist in my fingers before I start moving back that wasn't the clearest join, but uh, overall I think that's pretty okay. I also tend to leave my roving strips fairly long. So, you know, I probably have a good 18 inches on this strip. And I do that so that I have fewer joins to worry about as well. But I also don't want it to be so long that it's dragging down and it's by my feet. Because um, it tickles and <laughs> it, it bothers me and it gets dirty sometimes. So. I don't usually leave it much longer than that. So you can see I'm just pulling back with my left hand so that I'm limiting how much wool is actually coming up to my, or I'm pulling back with my right hand, sorry, so that I can limit how much wool is coming forward to my left hand. And I'm just holding that twist so as the wool, or as the wheel is spinning around and the bobbin's moving and it's twisting my yarn, I'm not allowing any of that twist to come up into the roving. I could still break this and it would be full spread out roving, but I am keeping the twist maintained so that it's nice and small. And I find that if you're spinning thin, you have to be extra patient because it can take a lot longer. Now, as you have comfort with this, you can move to a little bit faster speed for your wheel, or for turning the bobbin, I should really say. If I find I'm getting to kind of a big chunk, 
or a big piece, I'll just let that twist sit a little bit longer between my fingers on my left hand to hold that and spread that out and make sure that that twist and piece is nice and smooth. The other thing, I don't have a lot of noils or any sort of buildup in this fiber. This is actually really nice fiber from Laughing Lamb Fiber, if you're ever looking for a great place to buy from. But if I did, see I don't even have an example to show you, but if I did, let's say I had a big noil over here, um, I don't necessarily want that to come into my yarn. If I had a thick yarn, it could hide and I wouldn't worry too much about it. But when you're spinning really thin, you don't want any big bulky pieces of you know second cut or whatever else might be on here. So in those cases, um, you could try to spin it and just hold the twist a little bit longer. Hold that piece between your fingers and see how small that can compress it. But I find that if hopefully it's minimal that you have pieces like that in your roving, I'll just flat out pull the piece out and just chuck it aside because um, uh, you know hopefully you don't have much of that and you can just remove what little you have if you have a lot of that then and you didn't expect that it's not an art art yarn or anything else then um, you might want to decide if you want to buy from that supplier again or at least in terms of doing a thin yarn you might not want to go that route again but with a thin yarn, start with nice quality carded fibers that are really easy to work with. Kind of check out that roving before you get it and just see how you think it's, it's going to play out and if it looks like it's nice and smooth and, and you can tell this is going to be really nice and work really well. So this is pretty much it. Um, as I'm moving along, I'll adjust my I'll move where I'm at on the bobbin. And I have a Lendrum wheel, so it's really easy to just take this little clip and move it over. And then the yarn starts collecting in a new spot on the bobbin. So this is pretty much it. As you start feeling more comfortable, you can kick your feet a little faster and move along. But I kind of think that the general idea with a thin yarn, if you're looking for smooth, consistent, is to just take your time and go slow and be sure that you're, you're getting what you want. If you go slow enough, you can always check when you, let's say I bring in too much and I realize that that's way too thick. I don't want anything that thick. It's easy enough to just pinch back I kind of tap out my roving to let it fall a little bit and then I start from start over from there. And if I haven't been going too quickly, it's easy to catch those thicker spots and correct them before they get too far up onto the bobbin. So hopefully this was helpful in seeing how to do this. Now this particular yarn um, is being entered into a competition so I'm not going to ply it. Uh, which means I probably don't want to too highly overspin it. I have a tendency to overspin, and when you ply, it's no big deal, right? Because you pull out that overspun. But on this particular one, I'm trying not to spin any more than I really need to to get that yarn together and strong and tight. Because even though it's thin, I still want a nice, strong yarn that I can't even pull apart when I try. So I'll just continue with this. I've, I've only been working on an ounce, and you can see how much that actually already is on the bobbin, and I still probably have at least a quarter left to go. So it takes a while to spin something this thin. Well, feel free to leave any questions if you have any for me. Or if you need further clarification or any other video request, and I will be sure to do them. So thanks for joining in, and I hope, hope this was helpful. I hope that you saw something that is useful and will be able to help you in your spinning. Thanks for joining me.